Good morning. Happy Thursday, George, Hello. Justin, Matt. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Um, I really wish you guys had uh, Justin and uh, and Matt. I love your checkered. I love your checkered shirt. Thank you. Oh. Uh, uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> It's quite um, nippy here in the Valiant office today. Yeah. <laughs> it it looks great. Everyone, y'all look great. Um, how are you guys this Thursday? How's everybody doing? Ready, ready for Thursday. Yeah, ready, <laughs> ready for Thursday to to roll through, so we could be ready for Friday. Correct. <laughs> oh, Absolutely. come on, guys! You got to take some time and enjoy the whatever it is. I mean, I'm looking outside and I'm starting to see less snow and more grass, so I'm just excited for that. You know, yeah. we got. Between yeah. we got like two feet of snow last week, and we had drifts of like three feet or so in the neighborhood. So it's wow. nice to start seeing the lawn again. That's a nice well, thing. The temperature is it was 19 degrees, I think, on the day of the blizzard. Like it was really bitterly cold. Yeah. And now it being 30 to 40 degrees feels <laughs> yeah, it's all of a sudden warm again. short sleeve weather. Yeah. yeah. I'm ready I'm to go to Coney Island. I'm ready to go just <laughs> take, take <laughs> one, get in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to um, go run along the east side with an 80s montage as soon as we're done with the stream. <laughs> yeah, as I mean, that's the Thursday. That's what we usually do on Thursday. Um, yeah. Well, I want to thank uh, really quickly our regular viewers for tuning in to our live stream. Hi, Tim. How are you? Uh, we're going to going to talk about you later. Um, anyway, thank you, regular viewers. <laughs> um, <laughs> We are, um, we're a managed IT service company in New York, but we do have a national reach. And if you want to learn more about us, uh, Matt put it up right there. Please go to thevaliantway.com. And you can also learn about us by watching our YouTube channel. It's, it has a very big library of content now. A lot of our live streams, but also there's knowledge base articles that answer really simple or more complex IT questions. And Please join the conversation, comment on our YouTube videos, comment on LinkedIn, and you can also watch the live stream via Twitter now if you follow us at The Valiant Way. Um, and please, we do see all the DMs. We try to follow up and we will, if a question really strikes us as a good one, we will make a, we'll make a video about it or do something to address it. We really love interacting with the people who view our, our videos. Um, so really quick, I want to dive into what we're talking about today before I pass it off to our experts, George and just Justin and Matt, you too, I guess. You're an expert. No, 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 no. It's their episode today. <laughs> it's their episode today. Um, so uh, we spent the last few weeks focused on compliance and Tim, who already commented today, um, he joined us to talk about the difference and the intersection between cybersecurity and, compli and IT compliance. And last week we had a really fun kind of different video where we, uh, George and I did a crossword puzzle that Matt had put together. It was very high level uh, stuff. There were spaces in between some of the words <laughs> really threw me for a loop. Yeah. Um, it's People. the biggest thing since Wordle. <laughs> Checking out um, but it was hey, really uh, New York Times, give me a call. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, Matt is available if you need I him. Yeah, Ice searches, people. scrambles, what are the, uh, jumbles, work, whatever they are, <laughs> waffles, whatever you need, I got it. I'm your guy. Yeah. Boggles. <laughs> no, you're very good at it, Matt. It was, it was it was really fun though, in all seriousness, and it was cool because we had viewers sort of guessing with us, which Matt, you probably foresaw, but I was like, oh, what a fun interactive piece because <laughs> they would guess it before me, and I would you know feel properly shamed and need to go back <laughs> to my acronym books, um, and. Uh, today, we're moving on from the broader view of compliance, and we're going to talk about how to get your small to medium-sized business um, on the road to compliance by building or creating a roadmap for yourself. Um, our team did an episode last year, this time last year, Matt, I think, mm -hmm. about, yeah. Yeah, about uh, building a roadmap to compliance for your business. And... While the awareness on the topic has definitely increased, I know George and I see it a lot in our meetings with even prospects, a, a lot more attention is being paid to how to get compliant. Um, we want to focus on how to, I guess, get started, right? Is that kind of the general, yeah. how, how does someone get started? On it? So with all that, thank you guys for letting me talk, George and Justin. Yeah, it's actually, really quickly before we get started, because we missed, uh, we were just talking about the crossword, and last week we let people know that we were going to 
rework it to make it a little bit less uh, oh, yeah. less dastardly <laughs> <laughs> and um, make it available to people. So here's the link. Um, it's a oh, link nice. to a zip file that'll Sorry, contain two right. PDFs. One has the crossword along with the uh, the clues, and the other file in there is the key in case you get stuck. So it's all in there. Cool. And uh, it actually came out looking much more like a crossword puzzle than the one we did, as far as like the the symmetry of the board and stuff goes. And it it, it makes me want to make more. So if anyone has any ideas for those, uh, slide into our DMs or whatever. Can say. Yeah, please yeah. do. It was really fun. It was very fun to do. I have to say. Good way to learn the terms and kind of bring it bring it to a little bit of life because. As you all know, it is the most exciting topic you can talk about. Absolutely. <laughs> so. The holidays haven't ended for me yet. I think today's yeah. the last day of them. Um, Might be a pity. Anyways. So, excellent. So, I think, um, Megan, just to kind of start yeah. talking about this, is, is, is um, you know, I think a lot of people have really great intentions. I think we have to oh, I acknowledge that, that people have great intentions. They want to have, I think most business leaders and most people want to have these um, you know, these policies be compliant with both regulations yeah. and standards. Um, but A, it's really intimidating. B, mm -hmm. you don't know where to start. C, you know, sometimes you might turn to what may be like a trusted partner, but they may not know how to do it because they might not be doing it themselves. Um, there's, it's, it's, there's a lot of misinformation on it. And, and I think mm -hmm. that what happens a lot is that it gets simplified. Like just have a policy program or just have a, just, you know, have a junior admin and install exchange. <laughs> you know, it should be this like, you know, it should be this simple thing, but it's actually a very complex business problem yeah. about yeah. understanding your, your 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 processes, your customers, your employees, and all the pieces. And, yeah. and, and I think that what I happened think, uh, is, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I, go ahead. Yeah. I, I think that's where people get confused with it is that is that it's it. It is all custom and to to your business in a sense. It's not just like, uh, okay, here's the security best practice to like we're going to turn on multi-factor. Now you're compliant. It's well, how does your business operate? What what workflows do you have? What things does your business do? Those are all important play things to understand. What can't to figure be protected out. by multi-factor authentication because yeah. if you don't even think about that, you're kind of putting your head in the stand in the sand, thinking you're protected when you're not. These are, yeah. you have to have self awareness yeah. within a business to make the right decisions. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I mean, JP, we, we've been doing this long enough. We remember the days of people saying, well, I have a firewall. And then it's well, I have a firewall and antivirus. I, I, I don't really understand what the problem is. And then the question, really, it's the understanding of why would you need a firewall and or antivirus? And how does that, what does that protect? And how does it do it? And how does that impact your business? And how does not having it or the things it's protecting if they happen, how does that impact your business and what do you do about those things? Yeah, it's true. And uh, actually Tim has a really good point uh, about templates. Templates are just that, they're templates. They don't represent yep. the reality on the ground. Much let's like, also, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Matt. I, I was gonna say, let's also point out that Tim expressed his comment as a template with the double brackets around the word. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, was, I was just gonna, I was going to let that one lie. Nope. But I know you can't. <laughs> so, but I, I think kind of going back to the idea of the roadmap, right? You know, mm -hmm. one thing that's really important, I like can all, uh, if you're ever doing orienteering or anything about maps, uh, there's a really important term people tend to kick around. Uh, the map is not the territory. Uh, and what that mm -hmm. means is that while a map may be a representation of it, um, it's not the Situ or not, what's happening actually when you're walking on the ground mm -hmm. or when you're there, you know, so you can have, a, a you know, you can start with the roadmap, but what you find may be utterly different than what you anticipate from what, what you might have quote unquote mapped out. Uh, I just and, think about driving in Jersey as, as that. like, you know, oh, yeah, this, yeah no, this is, <laughs> I'm going two miles down the road. This should take me two hours because that's how it goes. And, and, yeah, that same thing. It's the conditions out there, and, and when you're, you know, and when you're actually going through it, are are not always represented on just the map. You need both. You need to know what's on the ground. Right, right. So I think I think it's really important. So I think I think the, and this is kind of like give you some some bearings and plate you know, using map 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 terms. <laughs> um, map quest. <laughs> map quest. To get started, I think I think this is like a a really important piece. Is this is a um a group effort. 
a team effort. There's not a solo person. There's not someone sitting in their office or at home or taking the train ride yeah. of writing out. All right, I wrote out our cybersecurity compliance policy or whatever it is, putting it on the shelf and forgetting about it. It's really important yeah. that it's a living, breathing um, map and, and it, it represents what's happening in the company. So it starts yeah. with collaboration and mm -hmm. a team effort. I think that's really important thing to say. I, I said, it, it, was, it touches every facet of, of operations. Yeah. There's a lot of different stakeholders in various different places in the company. So yeah, I think um, it's, it's very important that, <laughs> yeah, there are lots of people involved in it, but that also that somebody from the top is uh, in some ways driving yeah. uh, is, is saying like, these are things that we need to get done because uh, somebody with that authority needs to be driving it because there are so many pieces that get involved. Right. Exactly. So I think, and I think you know, it starts with that team effort. It starts getting like, you know, and also like, I think what happens too is people want to go and have it done. Just, just get it over and done with. Yeah. Um, Megan and I speak to a lot of prospects mm -hmm. that to say, Hey, can you just get this done for us? Mm -hmm. And the people who have any kind of understanding of what's hap what has to happen are like, Oh, this is really painful. And we, I don't want to do it. So can you do it for us? Yes. And at the, that one's as, as a customer thing, but at the same token, it, 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 they have a recognition of what the complexity is. People who have no idea of it would be like, well, can you just get us to check the box? Or can you just get us through this? Yeah. And you know, not, only is it, not only is it defeat, not only is it mm -hmm. like not really possible, but it defeats the, the, the spirit of what we're trying to accomplish. It, it also sets the, them up for right. future failure in the area. Correct. Yeah. If you don't understand and more than understand if you don't believe in the policies that you're putting in place for your business why are you putting them in place correct you know it, the, it, yeah so I, <laughs> exactly yeah exactly. and so I, you know just as a kind of place like, as a first you know if we're doing process doc or drawing the process on the paper the first place to start is like maybe start with uh what you by, by taking uh, some common frameworks or com common compliance requirements and just list them out for your industry or for your business and just start putting them together and start thinking about how they apply to your business. Like it mm -hmm. could be that it might be some password policies. It could be um, something more like, oh, you, if you want to go full bore, start with some of the basic cybersecurity frameworks that are easy to use. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, nah, it's not, well, no, no, there's nothing easy about them. <laughs> I, I mean, easy, I, I, easier than from scratch, but. Yes, <laughs> you don't want to start from scratch because obviously from scratch is, uh, is it, while, while it may sound appealing, uh, to develop your own framework, it mm -hmm. probably doesn't make a lot of sense uh, <laughs> because people, there's a lot of smart people who put a lot of effort into building some really great um, uh, ideas and concepts into something that you could use to follow and guide yourself by. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, pick pick one and stick with it. It's kind of like a diet and exercise program. Mm -hmm. Like they're all good. There's no bad ones. They're all, they're, they're, you know, maybe there are some bad ones involving, <laughs> you know, looking at you, keto. But, um, <laughs> exactly. but I see what you're saying. Yeah. And actually, Tim's right. It doesn't have to be hard. Mm -hmm. that's a, Matt, if you want to throw it there, it doesn't, have, it doesn't have to be hard, but it has to be done. It has, and you have to have the will to do it, right? So it really takes, it's, it's a matter of will and, and desire and, and, and basically protecting yourself. It's, 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 a, you it's know, self preservation. Race. Just make it simple. Right. It's self preservation. Mm -hmm. And so, it's, it's, your business is not going to prosper if you start running into dead ends due to situations like this. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I really, I, what, what, you know, what I just encourage everyone is, you know, if you, if you feel, if you want, if it, if it feel a bit DIY, download some of those NIST standards. Look at some of the real basics. There's CIS. That's a really great, easy standard to start with. Mm -hmm. um, there's also, there's NIST. I mean, if you want to feel a little crazy, you can get that ISO 27001 or some of the more mm -hmm. complex ones. I probably, rec I probably wouldn't recommend those. Um, was there really complicated, you know, was it really complicated, but just start somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's really the most important thing. It's like, it's like, it's once again, um, it's putting together just a basic starting point to acknowledge, Hey, we have a risk. We want to assess some of our risk, find our top places of it and begin. And I think, um, you know, by beginning, what will happen is you'll, you can build a baseline of where you are today before you start implementing change. That's another really important thing is uh, myself included and I, JP, mm -hmm. uh, you and I both suffer from the same problem is we want to fix everything. Yeah. It's like we see the, we see the, the shining city on the hill and we are just are like, yeah. yeah, that's it. And don't real don't see the road and the hill yeah, to get there. There's, oh. there's, a, there's a bit of the South Park of like collect underpants. Yeah. 
Yeah. And there's a piece missing how to get there. So I really yeah. think that's our, uh, that's, that's, that's a really important thing is like, it was a, there's a lot of great ideas and great intentions, but yeah. it'd be better, it'd be better for you to be honest with yourself and say, this is going to take me a year and I'm going to dedicate mm -hmm. extra time. Um, you know, uh, where, where to, where to start. So, yeah. And so I think even if the, the, uh, like, even if you're looking at the NIST stuff and looking at that, like some of those are things that are complicated to start. I think, uh, uh, you can also narrow down from there and look at specific pieces as a place to start, like just data privacy or just, uh, uh those pieces as opposed to the entire system right. uh, or the entire compliancy stack, because again, you know, I, something thinking about something is better than nothing and it's getting you started and starting you with with at least some pieces that'll have a lot of uh impact for you right i think i think uh, we, we so one thing we put together um was uh, a really basic data privacy compliance checklist that was downloadable we have our site matt you want to throw that up there is this to kind of we go through it let's, might be useful. let's get that link talk for a few while we have the link up on screen so people can grab it if they want yeah perfect so I, you know and and I think there's there's a you know using that if you start with that basic checklist, um, it, even if it, even if you're not able to follow exactly all of it, then once again it's a place to start your start your start your journey through it, start your work through it, and you know it's like, I, and once again this using this and it is using some basic best practices is, you know, figure out what data you have. Yeah, I think that's one of the most important things that I find yeah. when I work with customers is they don't really know. Well, you think they know, but they don't yeah, know. That's honestly the single biggest thing is that if you do nothing else, that knowing what data you have, where it's located, how it's organized, every other, everything else builds off of that because that data that you have is what you're protecting and is what you're putting policies on. And mm -hmm. if you don't know, then you don't know. How do you know? How can you, pro you know, how do you protect something? You don't know what it is. How do you, you know, do, is, was anything stolen? I don't know. I don't know what was there. So how do you, you know, you have to know what's there. And it, right. it, it's either, it's one of those things that uh, businesses either, they have it dialed in and they know everything because it's all organized or they don't. And it's, it's, it's almost I mean, never in between. I feel like George and I, so many conversations have started with some, someone, some um, point of contact and like, I just don't know what we have. I just need to know what we have. Yeah. And it's like, it's kind of one of the biggest first pain points I feel like we run into a lot um, when we have right. these calls. Pe yeah, absolutely. Pe people have no idea. I mean, and yeah. I think that's really like, it's really a very, it's, it, it's so, it, and it seems simple on the surface. Like I have data, it goes into the cloud. My data is in the cloud. Yeah. Okay. But you know, even, folder in the cloud. Oh no! Or, or, or even deeper than that. I mean, yeah. like, why? You know, I mean, you know that people always truck out these uh, these like kind of a complex examples of like, you know, I, I we were storing social security numbers in the cloud and uh, in a file folder in Excel and it gets stolen and all this other stuff. But like, that's like a that's like a extreme example. This is a lot of stuff you just don't wouldn't want to be on the internet or public. Yeah. That should be protected. At least the one that you know that's there and what's that's kind of classified and understand what 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 classified. I mean, tagged so you know, hey, this is important, not important. You know, critical, not critical. That sort of thing. And yeah. this, and with not even out right. on the internet. Yeah. I mean, even internal to your organization. I mean, I know uh, George and I uh, chat about Matt all the time, and we don't want him seeing that. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, Matt. oh, I'm sorry, Matt. No. I don't know. Please. Welcome back. Oh, welcome back. That we, was we were talking one. about you while you were gone. <laughs> no, but that was very good. I mean, that's that's a, a serious thing as well, too. We had a, a, a client uh, ask about you know data, somebody needing access to data, and realizing that their employees had access to an HR folder that they shouldn't have access to, and it wasn't like uh, it just wasn't set up in a way that 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 they knew the person who made the HR folder didn't know who should and shouldn't have access right. to it and was putting stuff in there. It wasn't not malicious, not not a hack, yeah. not anything like that. Just straight uh, uh, organization issue and, and, and data and collection configuration. Issue. 
And yeah. so, you know, I think, and it wasn't even HR issue like, uh, or HR data like, um, you know, like you said, social security numbers, just information about, you know, people's reviews and organizational stuff. So it's like, yeah, it's, you know, those sorts of things, knowing where that is and how that's organized and, and how that's structured is super important. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I think next thing is, is from a privacy perspective, and it really definitely correlates to, to, to compliance overall for so mm-hmm. privacy compliance is justifying your data processing activities. And it sounds like I have a fancy thing to say, but really what it comes down to is why am I collecting this data? Do I really need it? Mm-hmm. What purpose does it serve? How do I handle it through its life cycle? And what do I do to dispose of it and mm-hmm. ensure that it's properly destroyed? Um, you know, I, I, you know, think about here at Valiant, let's say our, our employee data was, and not, and I usually, I'd use employee data as a, as a strong, um, as a kind of example, because it's the one thing that every company has yeah. that has to be kept truly secure, right? It's, yeah. it's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, uh, there's a very clear responsibility by, by a company to, to secure uh, HR data, mm-hmm. be it from social security numbers, banking information, demographics, reviews. Look, if anyone's um, going to have when, my I-9 data, you better protect it. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And there's a lot, and, and, there's, and, and you know, um, unfortunately, You'd be surprised um, how much stuff is sitting in a hard drive on a copier. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So there's things like that. So I think it's really important to kind of justify it and understand where it goes, and really kind of give it its due, um, mm-hmm. and 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 and, it, and respect it deserves, for, and 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 holding people accountable for it. It's really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that kind of directly um, feeds in our next one. Provide clear information about data processing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. have a written policy. Mm-hmm. And once again, policies are living things. They're not something you put into a dusty tome and never come back to. Right. You know, it's really like, hey, we have a data policy. We review it as a management team annually, and we actually adhere to this. And I think the the important piece with having a policy is, and, and this is a lot of why the can't you just do it for me doesn't work, is that having a policy means nothing if it's not enforced. Yeah. If you know, if you have a dress code written down but you never tell anybody or enforce it when they don't meet that dress code then you don't have a dress code because yeah. you don't have one you're like oh yeah in our employee handbook it says you know you can't wear shorts but everybody wears shorts all the time and that's nobody ever one. says anything about it well then that's not your policy so it's that's why there has to be that buy-in from from uh, people with authority to to yeah. You know, make these policies real, and and you know, there, there has to be an understanding of why you have these policies in place and what happens if you don't follow them. And, and as I think, I think that it'd be better to have no policy, yeah, than just to have a policy that's unenforced, because and or the, the even more damning thing, selectively enforcing a policy, yeah. mm-hmm. which right. is, which is a yeah. very from is as a multitude of problems, but. Mm-hmm. Um, it, that is really problematic. So, mm-hmm. um, so that, that, this is a really great place to start. And once again, this is just as I reiterate, this is never easy. This is this is always hard. But start just yeah. get started. Yeah. Start with your, start with start with the start with the audit, and start with your internal and even start with your internal audit of your internal like is HR data. Start mm-hmm. somewhere. It's so also I like. Think- yeah, Any sure. other thing that's good for you, right? Diet or exercise plan. It's like it's you like people come to us. They want a magic bullet. It, it, they want they want it to be fixed. That's not how it works. What we're teaching you is every day improve. Every day work mm-hmm. on this issue, and every day realize this is a daily thing to, to address. Yeah, it's definitely very much like the the personal trainer. There's yeah, there's, you know, there's plenty of of help and work and stuff that you get from that expert. But at the end of the day, you're the one doing the sit ups. Exactly. You know? So it's oh well, yeah, and and you know, it, it has to be a clear you know, it has to be a clear cost benefit analysis for you as a company. Yeah. You know, and I think it's fairly clear, but or it has to be a risk mitigation. The only, but, but you have to internalize that and then accept that that, there's a, that, that these are worthwhile mm-hmm. pursuits of both your time and resources. Well, yeah, because mm-hmm. that's a fair uh, answer to a lot of this as well, too. It may not be the the, uh, the one that I necessarily agree with, but if somebody says for their business, like, ah, this is an acceptable risk for us, that, yeah, we understand that this is a risk and we're willing to take it, as long as you're accepting that risk and are saying that you're willing to take it, then that's your decision. You know, it's exactly. like I, I lock mm-hmm. my door in my car when I park in a in a 
busy parking lot. If somebody doesn't because they don't want to, that's you know, sure you can. Right. That's your your you have your reasons. Go right ahead. I'm not going to tell you but, not to. But, but don't get upset when your insurance premium is three times someone else's. Right, because that's the you know. But if it's just too hard for you to unlock the door for whatever reason, then great. Then yeah, there you go. That's fine. As long as like you said, as long as you're accepting the the risk well, and accepting you're not the results when of you get it. back to it and it's not there. Yeah. Yeah, you're accepting yeah. that that's a risk, and if if for whatever reason it's worth it to you, then it's worth it to you as long as you're actively making that decision instead of just you know completely unaware. So you know, I know we're, we're kind of running out of time, so mm-hmm. I'd love to get some of these next points up here. I think is really important. Um, uh, one thing is really important is to take these technical organization measures to protect data, mm-hmm. and what that really is is actually uh, accepting responsibility for data. Uh-huh. Where it is, and you know, knowing where it is, and then knowing where it can, how to which, either restore mm-hmm. it, destroy it, all the pieces of it. And if you're the, if you're the custodian of the data, which is really what you are, you have an obligation to the people who gave it to you or who you collected it from, mm-hmm. even if they don't know it, <laughs> even yeah. though you collected it, you know. And that kind of goes that in, next place is encrypt and personalize, and then, um, you know that that one I see a lot. As a as a, as a, as a always more complex than people realize, um, especially the anonymized part. Mm-hmm. It, it can be very difficult to anonymize data, especially if you're collecting it from large data sets. Um, depending on how you're doing it, it could be it from, you know, if you're doing a web server or IP address marketing activities, um, that sort of thing. So be very be careful and ask who you work with if you're doing marketing data or data collection. Hey, is this data going to be anonymized or encrypted? Where does it go? And that's and I think that's another piece here we haven't really touched on yet, but uh, it's a, a, a kind of an edge thing. Is think about all the people you, all the vendors and people you work with at all times. Mm-hmm. Really important because they collect data on your behalf. You're just mm-hmm. you're probably responsible as well. Yeah. So um, once again, internal security policy: write it out, even if it's simple. Uh, I would say put it on a napkin, but that maybe <laughs> ain't the best policy. <laughs> <laughs> But it's Maybe, it, it might not be very operationally mature to have a napkin policy, <laughs> no. but I can assure hey, hey, you, hey, I'd hey, rather hey, have a napkin hey, policy. Hey, 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 paper towels. Let's just move to paper towels. Paper towels. As long as you know where that. you're storing the paper towel, it's a step right. up from so, <laughs> from not knowing where it is. Get that policy out there. <laughs> Make sure yeah. it's two ply for redundancy, and uh, you're good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, so I think the next one is important. This is an ongoing. This is kind of the ongoing part of it. Is this you know? Does those backups actually restore data? Is that as is that data set actually uh, encrypted? You know, mm-hmm. randomly sample, test it. It's something that is hard because it's time consuming, but the alternative could be much worse. Catastrophic for your business. Catastrophic, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, data breach response. I mean, this is this is something that you could spend a lifetime working on, depending on different size businesses. It's such a complex thing. But once again, have something, who, what, when, where, how, and at least you have some place to start versus mm-hmm. trying to build it from scratch yeah. under that stress, Look under that moment way. of the stress. Uh, you know, as, as kids in elementary school, I'm sure we all had fire drills and we knew exactly where to run outside with the rest of our class and make sure everyone is in the same place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not like we had a procedure to remove items from the building or deal with the fire at hand, but at least we had something to help us control the situation. And that's really mm-hmm. what this is about. Thing, yeah. well, if you notice, is- there is an orange line in the PDF we're looking at that links to a guide to help build procedures to be taken in, in the wake of a data breach. Mm-hmm. Right. So we also do have some basic information to help anyone that's looking to get started in that area right. as well. And I think I think a fire drill is a great example because mm-hmm. the fire drill is not, you know, you, it's not trying to do more than focus on what's critically important, right? In a fire, right. yes. the critically important is getting the people out of the building. Yeah. The building is a secondary component, right? Preserving yeah. life is Preserving the life, priority. you know, it's at that order of order of operation. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, like, okay, that's a good point. Yeah. Right. Sa- we're saving people's lives. If the if the sprinklers preserve the building structure, if the you know if it can be contained to a one floor, and you start working back, you start working forwards into like mm-hmm what's going to happen or you work backwards from your outcome when you want, Hey, it's important that people survive. Next piece is that the structure survives. Next mm-hmm. piece is this. And then you can start assigning some value to it and some, you know, and, and I think that's really, that's a great way to start thinking of it. Yeah. And so, if all you get is the, okay, everybody, when the, uh, 
fire alarm goes off, you're going to leave the building and go here. It's still, that is so much better than fire alarm is going off and everybody says, well, what do we do now? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. That yeah. having even just People need a having, plan. Yeah. Anything yeah. is better than nothing. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. Um, not to make a needless pop culture reference, but wasn't that like a scene from Kindergarten Cop where they had one drill and all the kids were going nuts and then yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of put a process in place and then the next time they were like the exemplary class that lined yep. up, got yeah. out, grabbed the class pet, walked outside while the rest of the school is kind of like doing their kind of like freak out. And I think that's a great example of why you do want to have these response procedures. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Kindergarten Cop. Yeah. Go, back, and go, go back to like one of our favorite things to do is that tabletop. Just, yeah. start talking, just talk through what you're going to do. All right, I'm going to call this person. I'm going to do this thing, and we're, you know, and write it down and start working the way backwards. All right, let's move fast. So we have a lot. We've almost <laughs> over time already. Right. It's already eleven o'clock. So designate someone a compliance right. representative. Someone has to own it. COO, CFO, CTO, uh, uh, operations manager. Someone, someone with some authority mm -hmm. that owns it. That can, it can be the person. Say, like, hey, we got to be more responsible with that data. Or they, and they can enforce the company's policies and standards. Really yeah. important. Um, I, I jumped ahead by reviewing data process at third parties. Your third parties are, are one of our, you know, third party vulnerabilities are one of the largest weaknesses in any organization. Yeah. You rely on third parties, people rely on their insert, you know, uh, PEO or HR company, payroll company, HVAC. you know, those companies store your data for you. Mm -hmm. What's their what's their policies for maintaining data? What's their instant response? Do they have a you know, a uh, SOC 2, SOC 3 report, SOC 3 report that I can review or a SOC 2 once I sign my NDA. I don't know. You should ask yeah. for a due diligence. <laughs> um, so I think, and then this is, this kind of end up, you know, easy, you know, and this is more for like online sort of thing, but uh, easy way for customers and folks to re request the PI for what they know what you have. It goes back to the information audit. Mm -hmm. um, if they want to correct it or update it or destroy it, have a process for that. You know, a person leaves, they go back to the companies. If someone leaves the company, what happens to their file folder? What happens to their reviews? Where does it go? If they want it destroyed, now you may be obligated to keep it for seven years because that's what generally, you know, depending on the laws of your state or your company policies, but at least it's clearly defined and then you can go through it that way. So this is a lot of information, guys. I'm sorry I threw it at you. Matt, thank you for throwing this up here. I think this, 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 this document is super useful. Even if it just starts a conversation. In some also, way. it was just fun to show that it's a checklist that actually has. <laughs> that made me go, ooh, like I was, that was very pleasing. It's very cool as a PDF checklist. Yeah. It makes it a little more fun to do all this work. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, um, guys, thank you so much for being on our stream today. And yeah, That's Matt, that checklist is incredible. George, thank you for walking us through it. And yeah. Justin, your perspective is always so valued on this stuff you. because you are very brilliant and we like to hear what you have to say oh, about this stuff as well I'm always happy to be here yeah, yeah. thank you Matt. Um, it's, know, it's so nice to have you back it's like, yeah. and, and i and i can't and i can't wait to start abusing my children with that crossword puzzle <laughs> um, <laughs> over dinner tonight i know i know what the dinner conversation is going to be like put your word no more wordle we're doing yeah that. we're doing we're doing this yeah we're now, now learn something okay how about that um <laughs> so hey next week Oh, We're yeah, going next to be week. switching gears a little bit and yep. jumping back into some content around collaboration. Yep. Oh, yeah. And we're not going to do the typical, hey, this is 0365, the cloud unicorns kind of thing. We're going to talk about where collaboration came from, mm -hmm. uh, spanning all the way back to, gosh, I did some research on this last year and it was interesting. I got to dig out my notes. I think the late 1950s mm -hmm. is where collaboration became a, an actual term that was used in the workplace, like coined as, as a part of a, as a, as an attribute of the workplace. And It'll be interesting to you know put a little bit of a timeline together from then until uh, up to today, yeah. as, as you know, with regards to how we collaborate, what we uh, what we work with, common tools, the kind of benefits that we see, some of the pitfalls because there are pitfalls, mm -hmm. and I think that we're probably going to do another episode related to collaboration around what happens as a side effect of over collaboration. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, that was that was a great idea that you had this morning, George. And I, mm -hmm. I we're definitely going to roll with that because I think that we've all had um, experiences of over collaboration i've i know collaboration that, that their <laughs> friends at other companies i'm sure customers of ours have, ha have had um experiences as well over the past two years with work with work from home and adopting yeah. new tools and mm -hmm. maybe sometimes getting a little shiny object syndrome around the tools and then realizing that uh yeah. that collaboration was actually just more uh 
of a fancy way to burn through some budget than to bring some results to the company. <laughs> or, or, you know, or, 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 you know, wanting productivity or you trying to, is trying to, is trying to confuse um, collaboration with output and, mm-hmm. and, and, collabor- and productivity. There yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's, a, there's a lot to it. It's a it's a pretty meaty topic, and one that like um, just I, I've been thinking quite about a lot this recently. It's a topic for months. someone to dive in well past the surface at yeah. this yeah. point. And I think that uh, if anyone's going to do it, these guys <laughs> right here, um, the A team. So please, everyone, <laughs> everyone, please tune in to that next week. I'm super excited and fascinated by that topic. And um, guys, if you enjoyed today's stream, please hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to do that. Like and subscribe. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And again, keep up with our, our live stream and other content produced by our team. We have a lot. And um, please visit us at thevaliantway.com. And we'll be here next week. And we're excited excited to dive in those topics. George, Justin, Matt, thank you again. Thank you. Um, thank always you a pleasure you. to start a Thursday this way. Awesome. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you have so much. Good one, folks. Bye. Bye now. Bye.